heat pump remote monitoring what is it what do we use it for how do we use it how long has it been about and what do i think about it that's what i'm going to discuss in today's video so i'm going to talk about it from my experience and how valuable i think it is and the type of remote monitoring that i use and the different type of remote monitorings that are and how i think it's going to go in the future so if you've watched any other well, some of my earlier videos you'll have seen that i've been installing heat pumps for how old am i now 41 been installing heat pumps for 20 years now heavily installing them for the last 15 years and i have never installed a heat pump without remote monitoring that might come to a shock to some of you when I first started heat pumps, and again, if you've seen earlier videos, you'll have seen that my first one was a Wiesmann ground source heat pump that did have a very basic remote access. I then joined Global Energy Systems soon after. And right from the development days, from the first prototype heat pumps that Global Energy made, we put remote monitoring on right from the first units. We named it Ecolink back then, um, and th the way that Ecolink works is through a SIM card. So every unit that we installed, the, the, the original reason for doing it was was for um, development purposes. So we could we had to put data loggers on the units to see how they were performing, um, and it was obviously a nuisance going around collecting that data. So we put SIM cards in with a tiny little computer on. Um, that, that we could remotely connect to and pull the data off. So that was the original reason for it. But soon after, we saw the value in it from a, a customer a customer experience point of view, uh, installer experience, um, as well as our own development. So the decision was made early days that we would put remote monitoring or remote access, as it was back then, um, on, on every unit. So... We've been doing it for a long time, um, and what is different, the, the reason why I say remote access and remote monitoring is in my opinion, they are two completely different things. Many heat pumps, in fact, just about all heat pumps have remote access. They have some kind of an app um, that an installer or a homeowner can log into the unit and adjust certain parameters. Some will lock you out and allow you to adjust a few different set points some will allow you to uh, adjust multiple things um, and, and and some will just allow you to view data or view what the heat pump has been doing historically now again the reason why i say remote access and remote monitoring because in my opinion they are two completely different things well not completely different intrinsically linked but different so remote access allows you to access a unit and change parameters remote monitoring literally monitors the unit so it actually downloads data and does something with that data and, and there'll be different levels of that if you have remote monitoring data will be downloaded regularly at intervals and and either a human at the other end will look at that data and analyze it which is what we did early days ultimately we would pull the data off every day from all, all of our heat pumps and literally scroll through the day we'd produce a graph and look across the graph and see how it was performing literally we soon developed on top of that what we call traps or or situations that that are out of the norm for a heat pump so we would put in things like if, if, if gas temperature was high or flow rate was low or tank temperature dropped below a certain level or in our commercial applications, we, we would put, we, we might even put room temperature. So if it was a nursing home, for instance, and, and we would have a minimum room temperature of 22 degrees, if it fell below that, we could put a trap in that would alert us. It, it would email us and say, this property is dropped below a parameter that you've set look into it and then we would actively look into it 
other things that we've put in traps wise would be if a booster heater so that's a backup electric heater that's often built into heat pumps was running when it shouldn't run so any one of our booster heaters kick into life immediately we get an email and someone in the service department will look into it so that's remote monitoring so that is actual data being acted upon either by a computer or a human at the other end now that is what sets apart remote monitoring from remote access that is the difference how important is it is the big question if a system is commissioned well designed well and the homeowner knows how to run it most of the time remote monitoring and remote access shouldn't be needed day to day however the beauty of it if you do have it is if something is going amiss if the design is out if the efficiency is out if the consumer isn't confident in adjusting their own parameters that's where remote monitoring comes into its own we initially saw the value in it on our social housing applications so again early days 15 to 18 years ago we did a a lot of projects for social housing providers early days of early days of heat pumps and you get a var varying demographic in social housing from from young people to older people to people with disabilities and being able to remotely monitor those products those those heat pumps took a lot of stress and strain off the social housing provider from a service point of view so their engineers didn't need to do revisits when customers were struggling with controllers when there was complaints about bills because of efficiency settings we could access analyze the data see where it was going wrong and act upon it now as remote monitoring improves with the introduction of ai this is it's just going to get better and better it's going to improve the efficiency of heat pumps it's going to reduce the number of call outs required so again going back to my service days when i was out on the road in the van all the time if the service department called me and said adam we've got an issue with a heat pump can you take a look at it i would immediately log into that heat pump download the data from the previous weeks analyze the data look at what it's doing and pretty much be able to nail on what the issue was with the heat pump whether it's a flow rate issue um, a probe reading out uh, the way the customer's using the heat pump i could analyze that data and almost 99 percent of the time nail on what i need to do when i get on site so i'd go with the right equipment you know the right sensor or pump the right frame of mind so i would know how long i'm going to be on site if it's going to be a big job i'd set my day up accordingly well quite frankly early days of heat pumps if we didn't have remote monitoring i probably would have thrown the towel in because it was quite challenging because obviously these new organizations get involved with heat pumps um, and installing them um, things weren't perfect and having the remote monitoring enabled us to point our finger in the direction of where it was going wrong and act upon it and change it now us recording that data from day one to say from those early heat pumps 18 years ago has meant that as installation standards have improved as heat loss calculations have improved as new products have come onto the market better insta insulation better filters better heat pumps it's helped us navigate those new introductions and make the right decisions earlier on and find out where we made the wrong decisions so in summary in my opinion every heat pump should come with some sort of remote monitoring it improves customer comfort customer run costs install and mental health <laughs> and manufacturing development can't recommend it highly enough and again that's where at global energy we put remote monitoring on every single heat pump for that reason so yeah there you go that's my uh, that's my take on remote monitoring i'll just quickly pop up on the screen what ours looks like when we get that data back and, and what the graphs look like so if you have a look at this graph um, we can basically populate upon it 
any of the inputs or outputs that the heat pump has. So it's what we mean by inputs and outputs are sensors are essentially the input, so that's the flow sensor, return sen sensor, tank sensor, um, room temperature, outdoor temperature, the gas, the refrigerant pressures. And outputs are what the heat pump is asking for. So whether it's running its heat exchanger pump, its three port valve, um, booster heater, the speed of the compressor, the hertz that it's running at, flow rates, etc. Well, that's an input, sorry, flow rate. But the actual demand on the pump, so the modulation on the pump. Um, and we can monitor any one of them. We can choose what we monitor and we can adjust every parameter. So anything we can adjust on the main controller within the heat pump, we can adjust remotely. So in my phone next to me now, I can access any one of the sites that I've installed over the years and I can pull the data back from any point from when it was put in the climate room back at base to when it was delivered on site and its entire run life because we store the data on a central server, not on the unit itself. Um, again, that's another thing with remote monitoring and remote access. Some won't actually record data. You're just looking at it there and then. So that's remote access, but remote monitoring records data. Again, some units will record 30 days, seven days, a year. Hours record absolutely everything throughout the life of the unit. And it, it, as geeky as it is, I love it. I can literally go back over 18 years and look at the data throughout weather data everything it's uh, it's pretty cool and yeah with the introduction of ai as it starts to get integrated into the systems um i think it's going to get better and better from a commissioning point of view you know adjusting weather compensation curves um the, the units will just act and adjust themselves so there you go don't want to waffle on too much but that's my take on remote monitoring and remote access um yeah as usual, any questions, um, fire them below. Like and subscribe if possible. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.